Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report, and we have Tim Alexander, and we're going to go through a list of news, literally in the last 24 hours, how rapidly things are changing. Uh, so fault much for the warning of Mr. General Hagel and, uh, and the abominator, the idiot in the White House, our so-called usurper-in-chief, and in contradiction to my pastor who said we should show respect for Obama, even rulers are evil, I have to differ extremely and say, no, we have to respect the office of the presidency, but we should not respect a man that is trying to bring about World War III, force abortion and eugenics down our throats, and literally turn our nation upside down with executive orders. And yes, there were previous presidents that did executive orders, but this one is turning the entire Constitution on its head. There's nothing like it. It is absolutely obscene, and we cannot, we cannot tolerate this. We cannot put up with it any longer. I think a good term for him, I, I read this, I think it was a day or two ago, and I don't remember the site, but it was White House Fool. I think that's a pretty good I think he would, uh, I think he would actually dress up very nicely with it. the curled up toes and the fool's hat, <laughs> you know, just like the, uh, the, the coats. Are, they, 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 the like the coat with a bell on it or something, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, so they know he's coming, and the fool is here to try to entertain us with music and, and minstrel uh, songs and, and you know foolishness and, and jokes, etc., about the king and his family. <laughs> I think that would that be a good idea. Yeah, yeah. I was up uh, till two thirty last night. Uh, I I was one of the first sites to update uh, uh, the story I'm about to tell you about, and I, I've been at this on and off uh, today. Uh, I had to teach, but I was at it early in the morning uh, when I got up, and uh, as soon as I got back. Uh, first thing is, armed men have seized regional Ukrainian government buildings, including the. Uh, uh, parliament uh, in the um, uh, caucus, the caucus regional parliament. Now, uh, are you referring to the uh, Crimean uh, area? I'm sorry, so, the Crimean. Uh, yeah. That's what happens when you don't get into sleep. The Crimean parliament. Um, it, this sounds very much like uh, Rush, Russian Spitzbach commandos uh, going in action. Uh, they, there were several key government buildings they had to seize. There are some uh, uh, Tartars and others in the area that uh, are opposed to Russian uh, alliances or even uh, you know uh, rejoining Russia. You have to remember the Crimean was always Russian until 1954 when Nikita Khrushchev the premier, who was born in Ukraine, uh, gave uh, that part of the Russian Republic to the Ukrainian Republic, all under the USSR. Uh, anyway, so these armed men have seized uh, several key places. Uh, the, uh, the Crimean parliament now has voted to hold a referendum on uh, its future, the future of uh, the Crimean. So I would say the, the because of the overwhelming majority of people are Russian-speaking and so forth, uh, the Crimean will be returning uh, to Russia uh, in the not-too-distant future. Um, the all over now, uh, all over key places in the Ukraine, uh, Russian military forces and armored personnel carriers are moving around. Uh, they're on all the main roads. I have on my site, uh, Large Sterling's News Blog Europe. I have several uh, videos and links to stories with photos of the armored personnel uh, columns uh, moving on uh, Ukrainian highways. Uh, in the Crimean, they, of course, have seized the isthmus connecting the Crimean uh, Peninsula to the Ukrainian mainland. Um, let's see, a few other... Uh, um, oh, uh, y y Yevankovich has, uh, has appeared. Um, he insists he is still president. And tomorrow at 5 o'clock um, Ukrainian time, I'm trying to think, uh, Chicago time, that's about eight hours or nine hours ahead of Chicago time. He will, uh, yeah, so it will be tomorrow morning American time. He will be holding a press conference. Now, that's rather interesting because uh, what could be is he may be announcing that uh, he has asked uh, Russian forces to come in, or he may be announcing that Russian forces um, have entered uh, the Ukraine to restore order. Right. In either way, it's going to basically, the Crimea will go back to Russia. Russia will make sure there's not a civil war. 
Russia will maintain control of its oil and gas lines. Russia oh, will I not think, have yeah, the right, boxing its, its ports in the Crimean. Uh, so this idea that the West is going to carve off Ukraine and cut off at the throat right. Russia is not, not going to happen. Yeah, well, you know, there are some some comments out of NATO that uh, they will uh, uh, so they support the territorial integrity of the Ukraine and and, and so forth. <clears throat> they're going to huff and puff, and they're going to blow the host of Russia down, are they? Well, uh, you know, it depends on uh, who's pulling the levers of power. If the fool in the White House is merely a front man for the globalists, uh, and others like him in Europe uh, are pulling the right levers as ordered by their masters, uh, it could get really bad. Uh, if uh, more sane people uh, influence the events, it may not be that bad. Uh, in other words, it, it, the Russia may well seize all of the Ukraine, but we won't uh, engage in a war over it. That remains to be seen. I don't have a crystal ball to tell you. All I can look at is probabilities in an analysis. I, I will tell you that Russia has basically put its uh, just about its entire fighter jet fleet on combat alert. Uh, right. That has very rarely happened in history, uh, and that's kind of a <laughs> scary thing. By the way, if, if any of your viewers are interested in, in seeing videos, I have a large selection on my news blog of uh, r Russian, uh, the latest Russian military technology, Army, Navy, yeah. and Air Force. Yeah, let's uh, talk about that. Uh, you got a list here. Russian Smirch multiple rocket launchers, very, SC-35-37. Very I mean, let's go through this list. It's quite extensive, isn't it? Because you're a military Yeah, SU-35, SU-37 fighters, MiG-35 fighters, T-90 and T-80 main battle tanks. Uh, it shows them in action. Uh, mobile Russian mobile air defense. Uh, the, this uh, the next one is a selection of Army, Navy, and Air Force modern weapon systems. Uh, Russian warships and hovercraft in action. The Russian S-400 air defense system. Uh, it's the best in the world. Uh, the Panar S-1 air defense missile gun system. This is designed to move with uh, armored uh, uh, forces in the field. The P-800 uh, uh, Yankanak missile system. Uh, I didn't include the Onyx, and the, uh, but it, I, I couldn't do everything. Uh, the the <laughs> VA-111 underwater rocket torpedo, uh, which we have nothing like it. Uh, the older but still extremely effective uh, you talking about the super cavitation, You're talking about the supercavitation torpedoes, with the, which they've also shared, by the way, with Syria. So if they don't even need to have a bike in Iran. So, Iran has actually uh, copied them, uh, and I think China has them. Well, yeah, it's, it's a fascinating um, uh, uh, weapon. It, uh, Unlike torpedoes that, that normally have a propeller in the back, it's a rocket. But it's a rocket that puts out its exhaust on both ends, most in the back, but some in the front, forming a air cocoon, a bubble of hot gases, hot exhaust gases, that the underwater rocket actually flies through. The, the, the rocket is not touching water. It's flying through this bubble that it's pushing out in front of it. And uh, it's, it's damn near supersonic underwater. It is an incredible weapon system. Um, okay, then going down the list, high-speed anti-tank uh, missile systems, the Club M uh, Russian system, and of course uh, the, the showstopper of all, the Topo M ICBM missile system, which is a highly mobile, uh, completely uh, a global ICBM system. We don't really have anything quite that good. Uh, they've been developing a lot of stuff where we haven't well, been. Yeah, for 20 years, they've been redeveloping every year since Glasnost and Perestroika their new weapon systems. We are left in the dust. Yeah, they actually since have a plasma system they can put on their fighters that um, stealth them. Yeah, exactly. Now, we have a version of that that I know about as well in the forward ring. But, you know, it's all black ops technology. When we come back, war with Russia is World War III. Uh, Tim, 
you know, I've, got more stuff, think, I've got more stuff, Dr. Bell, to go let's, through let's here. Go, let's go through these lists here. And what people should understand is that when, when I heard this comment by this other person, which she'll, she'll be back in a week or so, and Dr. Deagle's going to have some hard questions because when people complain about another guest and say they shouldn't let you get away with announcing that this is means World War III, I have to second the fact that I think this move by NATO and the American banks to Republic criminals to do this to uh, Ukraine and to Russia is tantamount to saying like the killing of the Archduke Ferdinand and his wife. Uh, this is, an, uh, is the worst geopolitical disaster probably in a thousand years. This is going to bring about, if not now, it'll take some years to completely percolate to boil, but it will precipitate the list of nations that are finally going to come together with World War III. And mankind can't survive it. Without a supernatural intervention from the Creator God, we're not going to survive this. It doesn't matter if you're an underground hotel, as they call them, you're not going to make it. Please continue. Yeah, as we were talking on the break, you know, uh, uh, World War III would send us the survivors back to the Stone Age, but really, you'd been a lot better off in the Stone Age because the Stone Age like the didn't have resort. most of your, your land contaminated uh, for hundreds or thousands of years by high levels of radiation. Uh, the Stone Age didn't have advanced biological uh, viruses uh, moving through what's left of the population, et cetera, et cetera. Um, oh, l let me go through this because I want to cover some of these this stuff. Uh, Russia has sent a large intelligence ship uh, to Cuba. The Victor Lenov uh, CCB-175. Um, now, it's 300 foot long, so as far as warships go, it's not that big. But as far as intelligence gathering ships, it's, it's very large. Uh, it does have some uh, missile systems on it, but it's essentially an intelligence gathering uh, ship. It's in Havana Harbor right now. Uh, yesterday, uh, Russia announced that it's, it's seeking to place uh, uh, bases and refueling uh, uh, places for its long-range bombers in a number of places around the world, uh, including Singapore, including uh, Nigara uh, Nicaragua, um, and Cuba, and uh, quite a number of places. But those are in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, yeah, it, and by the way, Venezuela, Russia, uh, Russia also Venezuela. I mean, people need to realize Venezuela, there, are large, yeah. there are large contracts for military and air bases and naval bases in Venezuela, and they don't understand that this regime changed against Maduro is definitely trying to tweak the Russians. Well, it, it takes a real genius to take us back to the Cold War. And this is what the fool in the White House and, and his administration have done. I mean, the, 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 the Russians kept a arm's length from Cuba uh, for quite some time now because Cuba was simply costing them money. Now they've, they pushed the Russians so hard, even if we get by without this blowing up into World well, War III, but, the Russians yeah, you know the, intend to be 90 miles off our shore again. Now, uh, you know the history of why the Russians did Cuba, right? It was because we put a radar base in Turkey right against the Russian border. Well, we also had IRBMs, intermediate range ballistic missiles, armed with nuclear warheads in Turkey. Exactly. And when we put those there, the Russians are not numbskulls. They realized, oh my gosh, they got a gun in their head and they got a listening post there uh, for if we try to even counteract them. So they realized that what we need to do is put a gun right to their head, which is down in Cuba. And that's what they well, did. And, and that, that Cuban Missile Crisis was so dangerous, uh, as I've said, uh, I think, yesterday. We, uh, we're both old enough to remember it. I remember seeing uh, trains uh, with thousands of troops heading south. Uh, I remember, you know, the duck and cover exercises we did in grade school. I think oh, that yeah. would have done any duck good. Oh, it's <laughs> very scary. It Imagine was scary. going to your desk and it's going to save your eye. I can't believe <laughs> yeah, it. Was yeah. Right, exactly. Cover. Maybe for half a second, you know, and then yeah, you're, yeah. you're still toast. But here, here's the thing. At least we knew about it. Uh, the media now is beginning to uh, cover this a little bit more. But a, if you don't go to the alternative media, if you don't use this great tool of the Internet uh, to educate yourself, then, you know, you're just listening to you're the official victim. government propaganda machine on CNN, Fox, ABC, CBS, uh, NBC. It's all crap. Pure 100% grade A, triple A crap. It's propaganda and it's lies. 
let me let me continue with this because there's a lot of stuff. Uh, two uh, fairly large Russian warships, their uh, 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 landing ships, the uh, Maninsk and the. You mean in the Crimea, and down the, the ports are down in the, in the Crimea. So well, they, they had left uh, the Crimean. They were headed towards Syria, and they've now been turned around. They've re-entered the Black Sea through the Prosperous uh, Straits, and they're headed towards, uh, uh, towards uh, the Ukraine. Um, it's really amazing to see uh, NATO has called the Ukraine developments dangerous and irresponsible and urges Russia not to escalate tension. On my uh, blog, I gave that, I gave NATO the 5 BS flag award for that because it's NATO, it's the United States and some of her closest NATO allies doing the bidding of the global banksters that have caused all this dangerous and irresponsible crisis that's in the Ukraine. This We spent spent $5 billion of the American taxpayers' money to create this nightmare. And now, many of the people in the government now, are officially in the so-called government in Ukraine, they're hardcore Nazis. They give Nazi-type salutes. Uh, the, you know, these are, are either the physical or spiritual descendants of the people in World War II who fought in Nazi uniforms for Nazi Germany. And, uh, Oh, yeah, that, that, you know, that's just incredible. Yeah, but they owe Nazis to Nazis, let's put it that way. The, the, the German and Austrian Nazis were fearful of them because they were so vicious. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, they were. Uh, they went way beyond even the Nazis in in in, in how badly they treated people. Um, yeah. Let's look at some some options here uh, that Putin has. Now, one option is to do nothing. Well, we've already crossed that threshold. Uh, right. He has uh, a lot of uh, armored personnel, uh, carriers, tanks, and everything else on the streets in part of the Ukraine in the Crimea. So he's crossed right. that threshold. He has uh, eight hundred. 80 main battle tanks, 150,000 troops, uh, 80 uh, missile uh, ships and you know destroyers, cruisers, etc. Uh, I forget how many hundred uh, fighters on the border uh, with the Ukraine. Uh, latest intelligence says they're 25 miles away from the the frontier, away from the border, but they're pretty much all along the the long Russian-Ukrainian border, and I wouldn't be surprised if some Belarusian troops are, are on their side, uh, are lined up also against the Ukraine. Um, well, yeah. time is going to tell, but I have to tell you, it's looking bad, and it's a good time, folks, to pray. Right, and that movie, Son of God, is out now. It's a good time for that movie to come out, because people need to get Jesus, the real one. Not learn about Jesus, but learn about what it really means. We'll be back in a moment with uh, Chris Harris and our nuclear update on uh, what's going on in Fukushima as well as here in America, dangers of nuclear meltdown. Welcome back to the Nuclear Medical Report, and we have Chris Harris, and we're doing a major update on Fukushima. There's three major points that we're going to talk about uh, to start off with today. And uh, Chris, I'd like you to kind of state those points, and then we're going to expand those so people can see the site. That we're, I'm also putting a paper that will be published after the show today. And it'll be up on the website. I'm also going to do a video blog of it. Uh, it'll include a, a historical review of all the issues about Fukushima Daiichi, uh, the actual imaginative solutions for remediation, and then the personal uh, protection that you need to take place, especially for the long-acting isotopes that are going to really surge across the Pacific and strike North America and the Northern Hemisphere, and eventually strike every ocean and every hemisphere and every place on the planet. The levels will be lower in the Southern Hemisphere, but they will get there. It'll take several years. To, to reach levels that are going to be nasty, but what we're dealing with here is uh, is a, is is like the Keystone Cops dealing with this mess in Fukushima, and it really is a comedy of errors. It's a really scary stuff. The the level of stupidity and mismanagement, and you mentioned several different issues here, and I'll just read the the high points and have you expand it. Number one, wastewater treatment report uh, loss of control of the storage uh, tanks, and of course the ALPS system, which you'll expand on what that means not up and running to prevent catch and catch all the nuclides. 
Number two, reactor cooling pool. Number four, the cooling system failed after sloppy work due to pool excavation work where they already cut lines, electrical lines for the pump systems. And number three, started digging the first phase of their ice wall that is going to divert water away from Fukushima above the aquifer that feeds it from the mountain. Uh, let's expand these, and if there's any additional ones, just tell me, and I'll post them up. Yeah, the, you know, also, they had another leak. Go figure. This time it was 100 tons of highly radioactive water from one of their storage tanks. As you know, we've been talking about the inadequacy of their tanks to contain anything. Remember, they created a bunch of little Fukushimas all over the place. They're popping up like mushrooms, yeah. the tanks, because they don't have any room to right. store yeah. any of the... Uh, right, yeah. so, and, and this, surprisingly, mm. this tank, uh, the gauges on the level gauges failed. They didn't work. The alarms that are supposed to tell you you're approaching a high level and overflow didn't work, and the operators didn't know enough to shut a valve off that's filling the tank. Uh, so you put all those all those deficiencies together, and there's no wonder you're going to have uh, 100 tons of water leaking, flowing. Let's not call it a leak. Let's call it flow. Right, straight just to, flowing. Uh, yeah. The environment. Yeah, pretty bad stuff. I and mean, by the way, this also extends into America, where a lot of studies have been going on to identify the boiling water reactors, Mark One uh, reactors. And there's about 25 at 104 reactor sites in America that basically uh, should be removed and newer technology put there, hopefully something like liquid natural gas or more advanced nuclear technology, and they need to have a permanent repository for this nuclear waste so it doesn't sit on sites where it's the victim, it could be the victim of terrorism or just geotectonic or extreme weather events. So uh, let's continue. Let's start off with the wastewater treatment report and the ALPS system. This has been in the works for several years. They've gotten nowhere. What's happening? Well, right now, without a waste, uh, the, the system that they are using that pumps water into the reactors for cooling and it comes back out again, highly contaminated, does go through some sort of a filtration process. And, the, and actually, those tanks are built to uh, store the runoff from this uh, system. But they're trying to upgrade it to another kind of a system, which is necessary, by the way, which would catch more of the isotopes that we're seeing, such as strontium. Right, right now, there is no strontium catcher on their uh, filtration system, and, and, that's, and they're not uh, doing anything to detect strontium. I got a little side note on that also, but before that right. happens, I'll just let you know that they're not able to still get this advanced liquid processing system up and running like it should be. It's been plagued with problems. It's not an easy thing to do, and... Uh, the side note is that I know people who were on the cleanup of Three Mile Island who are the experts in the world, and they told them they should have been building this uh, years ago. You know, going yeah, I think it's possible. I think they're inventing as they go, because if I remember correctly, the kind of system they're putting together has never been built in it before. Not this kind, not, not this uh, magnitude of the system. And, yeah, theoretically, uh, it's possible, but nobody's ever actually done it, right? Uh, new territory. That's correct. Hasn't been done before. And Never done. Pepco has been very resistant in listening to these experts in uh, in uh, take, in giving recommendations as to that would be the, that would actually meet their goals if they had chosen to implement them sooner. And uh, it doesn't look like they're any closer now than they were, you know, a year ago to letting this uh, yeah uh, it, system do its job. Plus, a new problem you mentioned on the break uh, before the show today is that this uh, they're running out of tank space, which they didn't actually follow the instructions. It's almost like a husband and wife saying, Dear, follow the instructions so if you put it together, the pool won't leak. And guess what? They didn't follow the instructions. And these uh, tanks are supposed to last five years in pristine condition if they're put together correctly without neutron annealing and without the elements uh, if affecting them. They're falling apart because they didn't close the bottom rivets in many of the tanks. They don't have room, so literally the yard workers that are out there are going to basically start letting out water so they have room to put the new highly radioactive water in the tanks. So rather than having space to build new tanks to store all this stuff or turn it to solid radioactive waste from the liquid highly radioactive waste, they're, which is the ALPS system, they're doing nothing. And uh, they're literally letting these tanks go. 100 tons is probably conservative. It's probably more likely 1,000 uh, tons a day that's being released to the Pacific. And some of the reports are showing these isotopes are at least 500 feet down or 150 plus meters. 
uh, into the ocean. And that means that this giant plume is coming here probably by April. It's even now on CNN. They're picking up the story we've been carrying for years, and they're trying to pretend like they they did it. They didn't do have to do any legwork we have. And uh, some of the people like Yoichi Shimatsu have been back and forth and got toxically exposed. Uh, now it's illegal for anybody to actually report on this in Japan, and they want to pass a new law that will make it so that if you even ask questions of government officials or bring in your own testing equipment, you go to prison. This is a totalitarian regime that needs to get life. And lately they made a total 90-degree uh, turn and said they were going to shut down and keep shut down all the nuclear plants. Now the plan in Japan is they're so tied their economy to nuclear, they're saying nuclear is part of our future. They're now reactivating all the reactors they turned off after Fukushima three years ago. That's crazy. So, Chris, well, what they, do you think? They have a lot of work to do. Well, let's put it that way. Uh, they work on common something. sense first, uh, number one. But they have a lot of work to do because they're soon going to be joined with the devil in hell. Because they're literally frying their own people and their posterity and their genetics. And a woman's area of OI or F Fukushima, these highly radioactive areas of North Tokyo, they're just asking for trouble. It's just, this is really sad because the people that are passive like this will be exposed to hellishness. And that's why the most non-compliant people on earth are Americans. They want to bring on the World War III. They want to bring on totalitarianism. Bring it on, suckers. We're going to take you down to Chinatown. We're going to destroy you. And I want you to know that out there, Obama, and all you fools that think that you're going to crush the American people, you don't know what's coming to you. You don't realize that we, our God is God, and he's, he's got warriors in every single branch of the government, military and special forces, even to guard you as president, and we're not going to take this anymore. We're not going to take these kind of foolishness, setting up World War III, and then at the same time they're telling us that we have to monitor CO2, but they're not monitoring cesium-137. It's just sickening. And I'm sick and tired of even people telling us to give honor to presidents who are evil like this, when in fact we should show them absolute disgust that we can't even watch them on the media. And we need to absolutely tell anybody, too, that supports Obama at this stage that they're disgusting and they're putting us all in grave danger by supporting this guy. You know, even telling him to use executive orders to even do more horror to us. So let's go to the next item, uh, reactor cooling pool 4, what's happening there? Well, that was the part of them doing some uh, slovenly work, not controlling their work properly, digging out in some yard. This is what they're claiming anyway. It damaged an electrical cable. Oh, boy. Their so, flimsy <laughs> makeshift system. So, and it's an excuse down. last year, which is the rats. You know, rats ate the cables. The excuse? We had rats. They have rats. Big big rats. I think they have a little nuclear symbol on their spray painted on their sides. They, and they have what we call titanium teeth. You know, we have the... You know, one of these uh, 007 movies with yellow green eyes, right? No, this time it was an excavation of the destroyed cooling pool pump system. On the break, we were just discussing with Chris that uh, they're putting this uh, so-called ice wall on the downside between Fukushima reactor and the ocean. This is insanity. They'll turn the entire thing into a liquid radioactive oatmeal soup. They need to put it on the upside uh, because if they put it on the downside, the entire area will get saturated with the aquifer coming off the mountain and the entire area will become a thick zootropic soup. And then the subsidence, they have inclinometers already on these buildings, they'll fall over. And then you'll have the complete release of many thousands of tons now in pyrophoric fires and the possibility of a critical reaction including we call small nuclear explosions to spraying debris everywhere and then you really have a problem you have an open sore this is much worse than Chernobyl and uh, it also means all the other radioactive material including reactors number uh, four five and six plus the common cooling pool will then immediately be affected so this is over the top this is craziness and if they actually partially succeeded the hot corium could hit this ice wall and puncture holes so you could have a massive catastrophic release of radioisotopes directly into the ocean uh, after the whole thing causes subsidence and a major collapse so this is like dumb dumber and oh my gosh fukushima well the test well that they're drilling first to see if this is feasible at all is going to be of course on the unit four reactor which may be compromised anyway i don't know why you start there there must be for some reason and uh 
they originally were going to go down 30 meters deep, but they're going to, they realize that they have to go down deeper than that, you know, over 100 feet, well over 100 feet deep, because the test wells in that area are revealing that there is radioactive material even that deep down. So what the idea is you're going to try to uh, undermine the layer that has the radioactive material to go down deeper than it and freeze it there. But I guess uh, they didn't hit bottom yet as far as radiologically, so they're going to have to go deeper yet. And uh, uh, right now the test the test is, is a 30-meter test just to see if they can uh, get get the pipes to freeze the uh, freeze water coming through it. So if you remember now, there's like 400 tons of water a day uh, running through this. That's, that's an estimation. It could be uh, an underestimation. And so wh- while, while the, the leaks from the tanks and all, we look at that and 100 tons here and 100 tons there. But remember, this is 400 tons a day of, of clean water coming in and picking up right. material going out. So it, it's almost like a you know, spit in the bucket but uh, or spit in the ocean in that case. But... Uh, so they need they need to do something to control the, the flow. I don't know if this is the is the best way to go, but uh, this is well. They need to build something above the area, and they need to do something to stop the neutron flux, and they should stop <laughs> trying to remove debris from the uh, these fuel rod bundles because they're bent. Because at some point they're going to end up causing a pyrophoric fire, and the real enemies are neutrons and water. And building a water barrier below it is the stupidest thing. And then not dealing with the fact that neutron flux is your great enemy. Uh, and as this, by the way, as this pool continues to agglomerate, it's going to generate more plutonium, and plutonium is a spontaneous neutron flux generator, basically because this whole site was a site for development of nuclear detonator pellets for nuclear weapons. People don't understand that. They need to know that Japan is deeply involved for the last number of decades, actually going back before the Second World War, where they were testing nuclear weapons with Japan before the war broke out and with Germany. And that's why it's interesting, these collaborators on nuclear technology later became enemies. So part of the Operation Paperclip was to pass over the nuclear materials and scientists from Germany to America and to nuke Nagasaki and Hiroshima because the Japanese were using uh, nuclear enrichment technology and they were not that far away from the bomb themselves. So people need to understand what's really going on here is Japan has collaborated with the insane state of Israel for many years now and Fukushima Daiichi was actually creating nuclear pellets and material for the uh, Israeli military weapon systems because they couldn't easily get them from America. And they were for many years. This is the reason for the assassination of John F. Kennedy, who tried to prevent the Israelis from getting the bomb, and they were going to get it. They infiltrated our security services, our intelligence services, our, the, all of the things tied directly into the operation, what's called, what's called the Echelon system, tapping our phones, fax emails through the NSA, etc. Uh, all the security for all the major agencies is all under the Israeli control. It's just insane. And what we're still looking at at Fukushima is a situation where the lack of action, and then now they're turning back to nuclear technology, means when a superquake hits, and there was a Strip the City program on DirecTV just a week or so ago, talking about Strip the City, about the next city that will be hit by a superquake, and it's Tokyo. And when a superquake hits northern Japan, the entire site will be a massive release of radiation from multiple sites, not just Fukushima. At least a half a dozen other plus sites will release massive amounts of radiation, equivalent to many times the radiation released from a nuclear war. That's what's coming. And people don't, they're not ready for it. They have no conception about how bad it can get. They don't understand that food in the northern hemisphere will become radioactively contaminated, that people will develop acute radiation sickness, not just in Japan, but here in the northern hemisphere. And they, they think we're exaggerating when we tell them this. What do you think, Chris? Well, uh, you're, you're speechless, like right? I said, it, it, yeah, I'm not <laughs> speechless at that, yeah, because uh, I don't want to see that happen. I just want to let you know. That, it's uh, coming. I mean, are, I, I, I believe as a know. trauma doctor, the first thing I learned is, is reality allows you to have, actually deal with things and help people survive. But if you don't want to face reality, and that's one of the things about the Bible, it calls it what it is. Human beings, without the Creator God, are invariably incapable of doing good. We are invariably incapable of creating a stable society and civilization without a close relationship with our Creator God. And when we have media, scientists, and governments that are totally hell-bent on serving their own purposes, the Japanese government says, hey, just turn the reactors back on and our economy won't crash. 
they say to Japan, to, to Israel, we'll give you all the nuclear materials you want, just continue protecting you. I think that what we have is we're on the precipice of an ecological catastrophe that's much worse than the early stages of Fukushima because the big plume is coming toward their coast in the next few months because Fukushima is going to deteriorate and the radiation release coming is going to make the March 11th radiation release pale. Uh, and when we see all these things like the wastewater issue, the cooling pool issue where they cut the power lines, the ice wall being diverted to literally below the Fukushima site, which means they're going to thixotropically make everything fall into a big mush. So you're going to have major, major power fork fires and more and nuclear reactions and criticality and explosions. And then we have major releaks like this, 100 tons, which they'll admit to. And we know they're probably not 400 tons a day, but more like 1,000 tons. But we don't know. All we know is that the EPA here in America won't do testing. The, uh, the, the so-called kelp study is being kind of stage managed so that even, you know, <laughs> The director of nuclear engineering at UC Berkeley, Dr. Kai Vetter, Kai Vetter, and I tried. I talked to him, and you know they were producing good data at first. Somebody tapped him on the shoulder, and said, "You continue doing this, you're going to die," you know, and not so many words. Or we're going to take away your your grants or your tenure, or we're going to do something, or your family will disappear. Something bad happened to that man that he turned and pulled the best data off the thing of food, water, etc., and turned it into mush. And then basically, they're going to get data from 18 different sites on kelp. This is going to be between now and, like, I think December next year, this year. Uh, it's foolishness. You can't say before the study's finished that the data doesn't mean anything and it's, quote, everybody won't affect the public. That's an insane way to do a study. And then we have the, the situation here in America. Chris, like in the last minutes here, how bad is it in terms of what we may have learned from Fukushima that it is or is not being implemented in America with our nuclear reactors? What's going on? Uh, well, you know, the industry came up with uh, proposed a uh, plan of action, and some of some of the some of it is you know good ideas and all, but the boiling water reactors, I, in my opinion, are still uh, vulnerable. Right. To a in other words, it's, type, it's, type effect because of the basically because of the containment structure that could right. Fail. And that went back to that the early seventies when they had whistleblowers say. This is a bad design. It doesn't work. Let's fix it up. Let's change it. Let's pull it and put something else in. They can convert these to liquid natural gas. They can convert to other types of nuclear technology. They need to get away from old technology that's dangerous and can't be controlled. And another dangerous one is these breeder reactors. It was these hot reactors, or what we call MOX or mixed oxygen fuel reactors. Your comment on that, because I know Senator Graham was very much pushing this because he wanted to create MOX reactors, which put a lot more power out, but they're hot and they're touchy. And they can actually go critical really, really fast. And if the reactor core crew isn't watching, uh, this can really be bad. Uh, well, any any of them could could be certainly potential for for bad. Now, remember, it would take it would take a it would take something like a loss of extended an extended loss of uh, AC power, just like at Fukushima, right. perhaps it's, coupled with something that would remove the uh, the ability right. to. Uh, access the open the heat sink but there are there are locations in the united states that it can happen yeah there's they're below the water line for flooding they're in areas of extreme weather they're in the hurricane zone or or we call tornado alley they're along fault lines of multiple highly radio highly active fault lines over this last century all stupid areas and stupid ways to put a nuclear reactor in the place of harm's way amazing Amazing. Thank you, Chris Harris. Amazing. I'll be on the R2 tonight on the Reds Network discussing this and many other issues.